This video will demonstrate a battery eliminator circuit for the Ultra Pico Keyer. We're going to use a supercapacitor, a 2.5 volt in this case. The Ultra Pico Keyer will run easily on 2 volts. And the microphone jack that we're plugging into can have from 2.5 to 5 volts, so you'll need to measure that so that you can determine how many diodes to use. I only need one diode because my mic voltage is 2.9 volts and I'm just trying to get a little bit above 2 volts to store in this capacitor which will act like a battery. I removed the battery holder and the speaker so that this 10 farad 2.5 volt supercapacitor would fit here. And we'll go over uh, that's the setup. So all by itself and just using the voltage from the that comes with your mic jack already it uh, produces a trickle charge on the supercapacitor and it'll store up to 2.5 volts if you get the diodes right. And then it's ready to go. This will this will actually operate just like a battery and it'll definitely be able to handle the longest QSO you could possibly send with once it get, reaches its full sto uh, storage capacity. We'll show you a few more pictures here. This is the back side of the uh, unit and here's the battery. Now there's just a couple circuit mods we have to do. We have a capacitor on one of the channels so we had to do a scratch and break the trace right here and also the trace between the left and right channels. So we're just going to use one channel for the voltage and this connection is to the positive supply of the Ultra Pico here and this one is to the negative on the other side of the board. That's where the capacitor solders into. So we connect the ground from the negative over to the ground of the incoming mic jack cord. Then on one channel, which is over here, we've scratched out the trace so it's independent and we're going to draw the 2.9 volts through a diode and it's going to go towards this direction so it on the positive terminal of the capacitor it's a higher voltage so the current goes this way to the mic jack voltage power supply and then from the mic jack voltage ground it goes to the negative side of the, that supercapacitor and this takes a long time to charge up. Now you can jump start it with a, an external battery, but be careful and use 5 or 10 ohms to limit the current to the supercapacitor and charge it up maybe to a couple volts. And then you can, you can uh, start using it immediately. But it'll take days for this to charge up to, a, to the full capacity. But you can use it, use it you know, once it hits around 2 volts. My, mine starts working at about 1.6 volts. So when this supercapacitor charges up to 1.6, the UPK will send out the 73 signal that says everything is working. But I, I let it charge up to 2 volts. So let's uh, get a little closer here. This is the uh, trace. You see the scratch mark here and the scratch mark here. Again, we're just separating the left and right sides of the mic jack. Now this terminal right here is the output of the headphone jack and it was going directly to the mic jack so I put a capacitor here on the hot lead and there's a capacitor on the board with the headphone jack from the UPK to this negative terminal that's why we have to connect its own ground so that the current flows so let's go to the next stage here you see the solder points this is a mine using a point zero four seven but anything close to that will work just fine and it solders to this pin of the one, the one. I don't remember if this is the left or the right channel. But this is one channel and over here is the other channel. So each channel is independent. And this is a mono out anyway. So this mono out goes to one capacitor. Through the capacitor connects us to one side of the mic input jack. When the cord comes in down here. This is the again the mic jack of ground. This is the other side of the channel. This is We use one side of the uh, stereo channel uh, for the positive, and I have a stereo mic jack, so that's why this works this way. 
and the other side we just use to accept the output. So one side is coming in for the voltage, so to speak, and the other side is going out to send the the uh, side tone signal to the microphone input jack for your computer sound card so you can hear the side tone and filter it. And once it's all finished, it fits in there very nicely. And this is good to go. You never have to worry about batteries again. And if you're always using the mic jack, which I am, you always have a speaker, so you don't need that speaker there. And that's what it looks like close up. So let's go over some of the parts we need. There's the supercapacitor. That's what, what I'm using. You can use a 2.7, but I only could find the 2.5 locally. And this is just one of many sites that has this. You'll need a diode or more than more than a diode. You have to put these in series. So you'll need to measure this. So put your diodes together and put a put up another capacitor and do a test. Say, you know, just like a a thousand microfarads or something, let it store up a little bit, then measure that capacitor and see if it's the right voltage for that big supercapacitor. You don't wanna you don't wanna use over the two point five. So put enough diodes so it's, it's no more than 2.5 or just a bit less than this. So some mic jacks are 5 volts, so you may have to put 2 or 3 diodes in there to knock that down. It's usually around 0.7 volts per diode. That'll vary a little bit, so that's why you need to measure it anyway. And we have that one capacitor we need. Here's one for that's 0.1. This should work just fine, too. And we're using the microphone jack for the power, so it's the pink one on your sound card. And over here, it shows a mono microphone, so if you have a mono, you can probably still do that. You just have to make sure you choose the right channel for the uh, power supply. So in this, this would be this number two here. So you have to get your ohm meter out and figure out when you put it in the ultra pico keyer whether it's that left or right side that has the bias on it. And then you can you can uh, modify what you saw in my uh, diagram there accordingly. So this should work whether you have a mono mic or a stereo mic. You just need to find out which one you have. So get your ohm meter out, put it on ground here, and see if you get a positive voltage on both number two and number one. If you don't, then you have a mono, then uh, accordingly design the circuit around your particular sound card. That's pretty much it. Just a couple parts. And you can get this power supply here and use the supercapacitor. And don't uh, throw, about, throw away your battery. Never have to use it again for this circuit. Works really well, well. And the first video we showed you the filter here, this CAF filter. Here's what it sounds like without the filter. So this one filter, software filter, really cleans it up. Now on my computer sound card, this is the mic jack coming in, going to the filter, and going to the sound card so I can hear it, to the screen recorder so you can hear it, and to the pulse audio jack source so I can send it out over the internet. So I would choose jack source as the microphone input for any browser-based WebRTC, Skype, Mumble, TeamSpeak, whatever you're using. You could send Morse code over the internet using the UltraPico keyer that way. Thanks for watching.